All right, so I'll start this off. Um, we're just having a quick discussion because KJ and I got together. We thought, hey, let's discuss this new balance patch. I came up with a bunch of questions. Hyper Turtle here looked them over, reworked some of them, added some. And honestly, just want this to be a fair discussion. Um, no hate or harassment towards anybody. This is just uh, talk about it. Um, so we made up a list of 18 questions. And we just wanted to ask them and steadfast. If you want, you can ask some of them or any questions you like as well. And uh, I'll ask individual players at a random, in a random order. So if anybody has any issues, just let me know. Yep. And just to those people watching who aren't up to speed on the latest blog posts and such, you know, we've been working basically, you know, the days of David Kim, Mike Scipioni. Uh, Kevin Dong, all of those faces have come and gone at Blizzard. They're all moved on to bigger and better things. So ESL organized a community balance group, a balance council, that's been handling these. They figure out what kind of changes they want to make. They pass it along. Blizzard just kind of implements them. This uh, last proposed one, let's say it got mixed reactions. I think, <laughs> you know, since we're not throwing any hate at anyone, let's leave it at that. However, in much faster than previous times, they went ahead and brought up a series of other changes. And that included scrapping a good number of the less popular ones, adding a few more that a large number of the community had called on. And so here we are, and we're seeing where we stand at this point. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to start asking questions now. I'll introduce the players first before I ask the questions. So right now for our first player, we have the me number one Mexican player, uh, Zerg player, Cham. Welcome, Cham. Hey, hello, guys. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. And, uh, yeah, I'm so happy to answer any questions. That's we right. All... Make yourself comfortable, man. Thank you. <laughs> I am. I am comfortable, that's for sure. Now, our second player, is the man with the stash, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> we have the Polish player, Gerald, playing for Streamer Zone, by the way. Congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy I found, I found new team very fast, but uh, I still miss system sometimes. It was <laughs> really good with you guys. But of course, I'm really happy with new team too, so. Nope. Hey, just know, just know we always love you, and if if you ever need something, you can always reach out. If you ever need someone to interview you, we're here. <laughs> ah. Thank you. We also have uh, another Polish player, Terran player, the man, the myth, the legend, Spirit. Hello. And last and not least, our own Sidestorm Gaming's Max Pax, hailing from Denmark, Protoss. Hello. The man who begs to differ <laughs> as far as whether Protoss has a winning chance or not. <laughs> spirit and Max Pax aren't going to be on camera here, but they're with us in spirit. <laughs> anyway, speaking and of Protoss. Spirit is with us in spirit. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> speaking of our favorite race, the Protoss, let's start with some Protoss questions, all right? And I'm going to ask uh, Gerald this first, all right? So the first question, and everybody does have these questions. They have looked at them ahead of time. So at least that way no one's caught off guard and they don't have to think on the spot. So the first question I'm going to ask is, what positive and negative effects does the proposed change from battery overcharge to energy overcharge have on different stages of the game? And at what different skill levels? Uh, so this change is, of course, super big and uh, it has to uh, tell about all of them. I think, well, first of all, it's nice in some situations, like in early game uh, scout in PvP or PvT sometimes, but I feel like right now it's pretty easy to lose to some timing attacks, some um, all-ins, especially against Zerg. Uh, when I was playing, I found some Zergs all-in, uh, all-ins on like 55 turns, pretty strong. Um, I feel on lower level, it, it's going to be really easy to randomly die against stuff like free axe. And on higher level, 
Mm, it's hard to say because I feel like if we really want to check this change, uh, we should make one tournament on a new balance and old maps. And then we will see if, you know, like on Ocean Pond, say, free racks is going to be like free win. Yeah. Uh, I feel maybe because new maps are super big, which at some, which slightly help in PVT and PVZ uh, because of distance and stuff like that. But overall, Overall, this new skill uh, looks much weaker than uh, old one. Yeah, so it's just my opinion about that. Yep. No, that's fair. Cham, what do you think? But the shield battery, I think, um, in every level is going to have an impact for sure, especially because, like, you can commit now. Once you see the shield battery in the last patch, you're like, okay, nope, I'm not fighting in this. And then, since it, it only protects like one unit, if you have enough to uh, like uh, singly kill the other units, you you might be able to commit in certain engagements. So I think it will <clears throat> mostly impact the uh, early mid game. I think that's uh, that's really strong. Steadfast, do you have any any answers to it or? Uh, I mean, obviously, everything I say is going to be with a grain of salt because, you know, I'm nowhere near as good as these guys. But uh, as, yeah, as a caster's perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, so there, there's two things. There's there's the caster perspective and there's the spectator perspective. Uh, as a caster and as a spectator, if we can find a way to get battery overcharge out of the game and replace it with an ability that has more strategic depth, that is 100% a good thing. That is so much more interesting um, and I think the ability as a whole fills that role very, very well. We might need to see some number tweaks on it. It's going to be hard to determine how much the balance is, you know, because, because Gerald makes a really good point. Uh, maps can have a huge impact on the balance. And I think, for example, TVZ, we actually don't even know if the current patch of TVZ is balanced at the moment because the maps are so Terran favored that zerg could actually be overpowered in the matchup and we wouldn't know because the the maps are so heavily terran favored it wouldn't really like and i'm not saying that's the case i'm just saying it's a really good point and it's something to consider so when you change the maps and the balance at the same time it can confuse things um but personally from what i've seen and from what i've heard from a lot of players uh the strategic diversity that's provided by battery over or sorry by energy overcharge is like really really cool um like being able to warp in a sentry and get three force fields right away seems really awesome uh every minute basically after you know the mid game once you've researched storm uh you can warp in a high templar and have double storm available at any base like there, there's a lot of really good and really powerful uses for energy overcharge and battery overcharge is just boring it's just a boring ability and it just kind of sucks that uh, the game has been balanced around it for, a, at this point, a, a decent bit of time. So if we can get away from that, that's like, that's just fantastic. Um, but at the same time, it is really important that the balance doesn't end up becoming a problem as a result of like trying to make the game more fun. But I do think making the game more fun and making it more spectator friendly is, should take a, a front seat and then you balance based on numbers and whatever behind it. Yeah, especially now since it's come to Game Pass, we should expect a more influx of players and viewers. Yeah, it's an interesting one because before this, it was Mothership Core. And there is something that Protoss needs to stave off those early attacks, but they just never quite seem to hit the spot. Max Pax, uh, you're, you're the number one person we want to hear from. Is this a good thing? The energy overcharge change. Yeah. What do you think of that... Um, is that a sufficient replacement for battery overcharge? The new energy. I think overcharge. it's different and uh, it, it's stronger in some situations, but uh, weaker in some. I think in a PVT, it's probably a bit worse at defending uh, early pushes and uh, and um, the first attack they do at seven minutes. I think it's a bit worse in those situations. I don't really think you can um, do openings around uh, battery 
the energy of charge is like uh, going a century. I think it disrupts too much the build. But uh, I think in PVC is probably stronger than uh, the battery overcharge. With uh, where you can overcharge the oracles, which I think which I think is uh, quite strong, having a one fifty energy oracle and putting stasis. Also, think it might be a bit better defensive too. But in PVC, it's probably worse than battery overcharge. But uh, it's better in PVC and the uh, PVPF. I think it's going to be harder defending. Uh, all ins and that stuff. Yeah, the, that's my take on it. Yeah, okay. and that have we heard from Spirit on this yet? Mm, no, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> knock us out, man. I also think it's more interesting, but it's a very weird uh, exchange because feels like it's only buffs products in the mid game and late game, and which is already decent. But it doesn't do the best in early game, and it's a big nerf in early game, in my opinion, to like weird pushes. So sounds like a big consensus here is that it's definitely a change that benefits in certain situations, but maybe overall, um, not necessarily, but that it definitely makes things a lot more interesting at least. Yeah, I think so. Paper Turtle, you want to ask the next one? I do. So we got the latest mothership change. Do the changes to the mothership make it worth the investment now? And does making it immune to abduct really seem like a good change? And that's from both a competitive standpoint, but also a lore standpoint. So we'll start this off with Spirit, since he was the last one. Sure. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I think it looks more fancy. It makes sense. It doesn't get abducted. Well. It's hard to use to it, because you're not going to have the minus 400, 400 memes anymore, mm. which is, which is I, not I worth it. I think those will always be with us. I mean, six pool is still with us, so long after they change the 12 worker start. Yeah, but losing a meme is never worth it. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> a big, big no to the change. Big meme! All right, max box. Uh, yeah, I think it's quite good that uh, they try to keep some of the more law accurate mothership with the new change. I do think uh, having a process keeping its identity, it's, it's quite good. As a person who uh, enjoys playing campaign too, I think Protoss has lost um, a lot of identity in Legacy Void. It, it feels like you the Protoss is the weakest units and uh, have to out-expand the other races a bit. Yeah, Which I'm not you know, you thing, don't have fear of a dune hovering over the game anymore, huh? Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't... Oh, yeah. it's just mentioning that in the campaigns you have the Spear of a Dune abilities, and that's one of the big parts of the power fantasy there. <clears throat> Yeah, I was more thinking of Wings of Liberty uh, in okay, Outer Darkness. Fair enough. There are four <laughs> Protoss missions in there for the record. You take a little little sidetrack there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure balance-wise it, it's good or not. It's definitely fun, the new uh, Marvel ship. It looks cool. And uh, it feels like it does a bit more than it did the last patch. But I'm not sure. Okay. Cham, have you had a chance to try to abduct a mothership and not have anything happen? <laughs> the first time, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's a very good change for Protoss. It definitely makes it a bit harder in late game to exert, because uh, when you make an engagement in the late game, you try to trade off. You usually take the mothership first, because uh, when it cloaks, you, you, you can't see where the tempers are for, um, to avoid them, you know, for the feedback, and you can see how many units he has in reality if you don't have um overseer quite uh, close mm -hmm. so you usually go for the money ship right away because it's just the experience here the slowest and the biggest um it's the one you can see too or yeah, it yeah. used to be before it was a temporary thing but yeah like a bullseye the size of a planet huh <laughs> yeah exactly that's the the first thing you go for 
And then after that, um, it's really nice to see exactly how much army he has and if you can commit or not, right? So, but now, since you cannot do that, you you it makes it a bit it makes it a bit hard for the eye to see exactly uh, where to pick up or see if you can uh, make the engagement. You know, so it's definitely um, a better thing for Protoss than for say. It's a nice trade off that uh, that now the cloaking field is a more limited time thing. Yeah, that as well. But still, um, if you use this at the right time, I think it's more than enough time to um, okay to to make the engagement. You know, for their benefit. And Gerald, what's your thoughts on all this? Uh, well, I think, uh, like... Well, it's... the changes to the mothership. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like this trench is quite strong. and uh, But with new Tempest, maybe it's not that bad for Zerg overall. Um, it's hard to say because there are a lot of changes in pvz late game like this uh tempest lunch like infestor like this mothership and uh even hydra yeah. so i feel like uh it's 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 nice you you know because now they just abduct your mothership you lose this in one second and you wait another <laughs> like two minutes for the next one and then repeat and it feels bad so it's nice it's not gonna happen again i'm not sure it's gonna uh, it's uh, it's going to be uh too strong yeah but i'm not sure maybe maybe I, uh, not sure yet but uh, I think uh, I also really uh, I was really enjoying uh, playing campaign and I think uh, it's good change uh, to the lore of the game yeah so okay yeah we're gonna miss it on the old meme of minus 400 400 feels bad as we said but I'm loving that we have so many campaign fans here make <laughs> me feel more included <laughs> Dave you want to answer the question or do you want to ask the next one uh, I, I do want to answer this one because I, I have a, a little bit that, that was that was a little bit vanilla. Everyone was kind of like, well, you know, it's OK. Um, <laughs> it makes more sense. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I personally. So, OK, there is two sides to this coin or actually there's a lot of sides, really. But there is the side of like, yeah, it's it, it's a really feels bad moment when you have a, a lower supply unit abduct the mothership and it gets nothing done and it just dies. Uh, that's that's a really feels bad moment, and the the concept of the power fantasy of Protoss is for sure. Uh, it's definitely something that has been missing since the Viper's been able to abduct the mothership. But with all that said, how do you possibly engage a mothership now if there's no way to uh, like yoink it away from the army or jump it? Um, so I'm not concerned so much about like mass sky toss. What I'm concerned about is like really heavy ground Protoss with a mothership for support. Because if you just build corruptors to deal with the mothership and it's only uh, you just have built the mothership, you're going to need a lot of corruptors to kill that mama ship. Uh, assuming there's Archons, High Templar, Stalkers underneath, honestly, just any of the two, really, even just Archons in general, going to make it pretty difficult to approach. Um, and then if you don't build those corruptors, then you can just never touch the mothership. Uh, like you're not getting in range with Hydras and there's just no other anti-air that Zerg has. Uh, and it's just going to make it like really difficult. Like right now it feels like most most units in the game have like some kind of good answer to them. Uh, but I think the Mothership, if you remove Abduct and don't place something else that's going to allow you to make a play against it, I think it's going to be a really big problem, especially with the fact that now it's actually a jacked combat unit. Like, if you look at um, what they did with the the changes to the the damage over overall, the unit is just really strong. Like, you're seeing engagements where the the mothership survives for like a few units or a few minutes, and you're like, "Damn, this thing has forty kills!" Like, this is this is a proper unit now. Like, this is uh, really strong, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. But I think combining that and then also making it so that the one answer Zerg has is kind of gone uh, could turn into a big problem. Uh, as far as PVT, I think I think the mothership is awesome. I think it's super cool. 
Uh, I think the time warp change was really good. I think a lot of things were like, like it's, it's a unit that can really impact things one way or another, especially now that there's no energy on it. But I am concerned what we're going to see in PVZ. Uh, and to be honest, I, I just don't think Zerg is going to have an answer at this point. Yeah. It's always been an interesting unit. The one hero unit in Versus that you can only have one off at a time. And yeah, I do was... remember back in the early, back in the reveal days of, hey, this isn't Warcraft 3. What's that doing there? Yeah, I was going to say um, that, like, it's basically the only hero unit that we have in StarCraft 2 competitor. Yeah. Like, would you classify that now as a hero unit? I mean, yeah, I would, it is for sure. If it, it can do things that nothing else can do, and there's only one of each allowed in battle, except in 4v4, which gets really interesting if everyone's <laughs> doing Mothership. But they always wanted to have this big power fantasy of it. And in the end, for a long time, it kind of turned out to be more of another Arbiter, except you could only have one of them. Fair enough. Well, let's pivot away from Protoss and let's go yeah. to Terran really quick. So the question that I have, and I'm going to ask uh, Cham this first. So is allowing extra supply calldowns to instantly heal depots and increase their health beneficial to the game? And does it bring any balance concerns? I think not not at all in balance concerns. I think it will only uh, affect the early game. If you make a push or something, you can uh, heal it up and protect your wall. But like in mid game, late game, I don't see any change. Like, how are you going to be that fast to uh, heal the depot when five bailings are going to blow it up right away? Right? Like, I think mostly in early game, I can see some benefit. I guess it's just uh, against rushes. Yeah. All right, Spirit. What do you think? Mm. One second, because I didn't treat the... Uh... <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Mm. I think it doesn't really matter, that change at all. It might be very, very cool if someone plays, I don't know, two base baiting us and you somehow time well the, the depot. And I don't know, it goes back to full health when it's like red HP. That might be pretty cool, but well, because I think it's hard because HP, right. Mm, sorry, it becomes five hundred HP, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I still think it's, it will be used only for these moments to save like a red HP depot. But I already tested that, and it's pretty hard to do. <laughs> that might might never happen. Fair enough. I have a I have a question. Um, does rapid fire and then using that ability in a depot can heal it if you use Bainings, and then which is mm -hmm. well, you'd run out of it? energy almost. You'd run out of energy pretty quickly. Um, like if, I'd still like to see that tried though. Like if you have like four CCs full of energy and then just like ten Bainings try to kill one, um, reply no, because it, fire? no, right? Yeah, it wouldn't no, work because cause it it can only be changed once. Once uh, it has okay. once it has the super depot designation, you can't make it like you can't cast it again. You have to go from depot to depot to depot. Yeah, but it's also... Oh, sorry. It's not instant. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, it takes like... It's like a 1.5 second cast time or something, or two seconds. If it was uh, instant, I think it would actually be super, super broken. Yeah, um, yeah. Because <laughs> if you could... if So let's say five Banelings are running up the ramp, and two of them hit, and then you call it down, and like it's like literally like 0.2 seconds between the first Baneling hitting and the, the fifth Baneling hitting, and it like went through right away, I think that would be super broken. Um, but since it takes like two seconds, I don't think it's a problem. Gerald, what do you think? I think um, it's not a problem with balance. Uh, I mean, with the skill. But first, it looks pretty stupid. <laughs> because, <laughs> like, for example, when you have Marine, yeah? And, uh, and you will uh, finish combat shield. It's not getting 100% HP. Yeah, just extra 10. So I think it should work that way. Same with combat shield and uh, and with this extra supply. And second, I'm not big fan of the skill overall because I mean, you can use it only when your macro is bad, like in normal game. So um, like, I think the skill is super unique because I don't see any other skill like um, uh, Protoss, Terran, or Zerg, 
which is uh, helpful only with pet macro. Yeah, it's not like it's not skill you want to use. So for me, it's weird skill, but it's not. Uh, I mean, it's it's not going to be unbalanced or something like that. So it's always been an interesting one because that's the one where. You know, throughout, I think, all of the abilities in the game, there's sort of a kind of shame that comes with using the supply call down <laughs> previously. And I kind of wonder whether this is going to be even more shameful or whether this is going to make you look more crafty. Spirit, you got any thoughts on it? Oh, we already asked Spirit. Oh, we did. You're right. I was going to say, oh. actually, uh, Steadfast mm -hmm. and Max Packs. I know both of you guys have both casted and played in PTR tournaments. Has this ever come up in... What do you guys think of it? Well, see, I don't think TM players knows it exists. If uh, they have a, <laughs> a supply depot dying, I haven't <laughs> seen them use it. Well, how about you, Steadfast? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't cast a ton of games for sure, but I've cast a decent number on the PTR. I haven't seen it come up once. Um, okay. I think... I think you're you're gonna find very specific scenarios where it could be useful, like maybe a maybe like a zealot run by on a third base, and you just happen to have had like enough energy for a mule, and you instead decide to call it down so you can repair a like lower DPS on a bunker that's behind it or something. But it's gonna be really really specific. Like seeing it actually used in the game is gonna be rare. For me, the main question is like why like why did we add this one like was anyone like oh man orbital command isn't strong enough we need to make it stronger <laughs> like, yeah. yeah who uses mules anymore right like uh i i think there's always been a little bit of a push within the balance council to we need to make this obscurability worth something i mean even even stuff like uh, overlords dropping creep you know you remember there were balance changes for mm how long it took in between doing that. So yeah, I think I think there's definitely an urge to try to make everything useful. So uh, Hyper Turtle, you came up yeah. with this next question. You want to ask it? Well this is I did not come up with this question. Oh. I copied it from about 18 different streams where I've heard people debating about it. <laughs> but this is this is the one that's um I think what was the big one, even before the balance change got updated, everyone was asking, why isn't anything being changed in the ghosts? So how important is the proposed change to make ghosts cost three supply instead of two? And does this, how far does this go to addressing all that, all those concerns that were brought up when the ghost wasn't touched this time around? And who did we leave off with? Other, Max Pax. Yep. Yeah, all right. So the question is a cyclone question. Uh, no, so it's a one before one. that. We are going for ghosts. And I think that's probably the biggest topic in the whole uh, update they did. Well, I don't know about the uh, TVC if, if it's going to change much, but uh, I don't think it's going to change too much in the uh, PVT. I still think Tian is going to make like four and five ghosts. And uh, I think. The disruptor change is probably more impactful than uh, the ghost change in late game PvT. Yeah, that's fair. We actually uh, didn't add a disruptor question because we also didn't want to touch like minute changes or like small changes, even though that one's not a small change. But we actually have a lot of questions, so we figured ah, we got to cut some out back and some out. I was gonna say, uh, Spirit, what do you think about the mm -hmm. ghost change? I don't like it because in TVC I'm gonna play the, exactly the same way as before mm. because I it's like mandatory to have like 15 goals to deal with hive tech so nothing changed with this plus if there's no hive tech I still need to be prepared because I can just switch to to like I don't know 15 lurkers with like 15 seconds or I don't know how long it morphs because you already have like 15 hydra or 20. It's the same with Broodlord, so you need to have it ready before. And I guess Protoss. Mm. I think it's annoying in the late game, because I can't go 
high worker count. I need to stay at like 70 because I lose too much DPS. And as the same story, I still need like eight ghosts to deal with high Templars and main army. Well, Gerald, you always face uh, Spirit all the time. What do you think of his response? I mean, uh, I feel like uh, it's too <laughs> what he said. <laughs> and uh, I uh, like, I don't like this change that much I, because for me, uh, I mean, it's not the biggest problem, but I feel like even with eight ghosts, if you just EMP Protoss army and you have good concave, you just win. Like, even without this extra eight marines. Yeah, because the EMP is super strong, it's stuck. Yeah, so if you use three or four of them at the same time, Protoss, uh, Protoss has zero shield, which is the issue. So instead of this change, I would like to see some change to EMP. Maybe to make it work like Storm. So, you know, when you have Storm, you can't just live in the same place and, uh, or, you know, it's not instant damage. Yeah. I feel like change like this would be cool, maybe. Uh, about TVZ, I think it's too, you just need like 10, 15 ghosts, but I'm not the expert, so I will leave, leave it for now. Fair enough. I was going to say, uh, Steadfast and Cham, what do you guys think as Zerg players? Um, <clears throat> I think it will impact a lot in our matchup. Uh, well, there's two ways that Terran can play, right? So the first way is that flame style, where he goes ultra instinct and he keeps like <laughs> trading all over the map and then he beats you here, there. And um, there's a point where there's a transition, you get ultras or whatever, but you're still not like max and he's not max, right? So there's a point where he can make ghost, but because he's not max, it's not going to matter the supply. It's going to be the same as the last patch, right? If he keeps trading. But there's a moment, like, for example, like the speed style where he likes to be calm and not attack and then just stay high work account and then just like camp the map, basically. That's where it will uh, impact a lot. And because uh, just imagine you need a 15 ghosts, right? And then one less supply, that's basically like five times, five times less. Or like almost two full maybacks of bio where they need a little bit of bio as well. So I guess they will need to be lower on the SCBs, but if they do that, they will if we kill a base or we do something, it's gonna affect them even more, right? So it will only affect the passive style where you max out in, on on your late game army. But if you try to play like claim like here and there and then just trading like ultra instinct, I think it's gonna be the same as things the best as then. But um yeah, just uh, the late game. And then with Protoss, well, I'm not an expert yet. I think I agree with what Max, Max Pax and uh, Gerald said. Fair enough. And Steadfast, you want to answer or do you want to move on to the next one? Uh, I mean, I want to give a little bit of an answer, yeah. Uh, of course. I Personally, I'm of the opinion that the Ghost is... <sighs> I mean, honestly, I'd love to see TVZ broken down a little bit and go back to a lot more uh mid-game oriented constant fighting like in a perfect world but it would be very difficult to set that up so with the context of the game kind of staying with the ghost still being a super powerful unit and kind of the main answer to uh zerg late game i would still rather have seen a different type of change because even though increasing the supply may make it a lot, will make it a lot easier to deal with heavy ghost play. It doesn't feel like it's a, it doesn't feel like a sexy solution. Like it doesn't feel like a cool solution. Like you're still going to have players building 16, 20 ghosts in the late game. They're just going to have less other units, um, which means they'll probably have more planetaries and more orbitals to replace their SCVs. Like, it's, it's going to make the game, I think, potentially even less strategic, possibly, than it is. Not in terms of, like, the strategy employed per se, but in terms of the unit comps. Like, you're probably going to see the same number of ghosts and then just less other stuff to support the ghosts, which is, in my opinion, a little bit boring. Um, I do think TBZ is so heavily map-dependent. I mean, we're going back to the old thing. Um, but what I would have really preferred to have seen is, like, either make the ghost light... So that when you do catch it with your infestors and, you know, Banelings can uh, 
actually roll in that are actually able to do damage or lower the combat stats in some way like basically make it so that it feels like the ghost isn't necessarily a spellcaster that's also like one of the strongest fighting units in the game it just it feels so weird to have you know every other spellcaster in the game be like very very vulnerable when it gets jumped and then the ghost gets jumped and it like beats the shit out of everything you know like it just <laughs> it just beats everything even without energy um that's obviously a little bit of an exaggeration but it, it's it feels weird to have a a multi-purpose unit like that you don't mess with nova you know <laughs> <laughs> well, like, especially if you're Zerg and then your opponent decides to make nothing but ghosts and you're like, okay, how do I fight that? Right. But, so, anyways, well, so actually, think, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. I think we might just need to check, like, who has something to say about each of these. We don't mm. necessarily need to go to yeah. everyone each time since we're, what, four questions in now? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe yeah. raise your hand if you have a strong opinion. Hmm. All right. Or if you're not on camera, just yell. All right, so the next one will be about the Cyclone. So would reverting the Cyclone changes help the early game, or does the old version have its own issues? Mm. The issue of the old version is that it's boring. <laughs> and I never make it. And that's pretty much it. But I guess it will help in the early game. I think it, help, uh, <clears throat> it helps a bit in a early game i think uh, the old cyclone pretty much killed the uh, phoenix builds like phoenix builds were, uh, were not very good because uh, the cyclone was way too good against AO and way too cheap like one cyclone and four marines could uh, pretty much defend against three phoenixes and uh, it was very good both defensive and uh, offensive against target dbt so uh, i think changing it would help Target builds. By the old cyclone, you mean the reactor cyclone, the one that's currently on the live patch, right? Yeah. Okay. The okay. old one. Yeah, the old old one. Yeah, because when I think old it's, cyclone, it's, I think of the tech lab one. But that that's fair. That's fair. This isn't even the first time. This isn't even the first reactor cyclone. There was one that uh, had a manual lock on for anti air and just a rapid fire anti ground attack. So mm. this was the second stab at that concept. So yeah, both times kind of just or at least what's proposed right now, is bouncing right back to the beginning yet again. If no All right, anyone else in. have strong thoughts? Nope. Uh, well, I mean, I, I do. I, oh. I personally oh. think right. it's, um, it's much more interesting in the tech lab version. Uh, there's no other unit that's really like it in the game, whereas the version for the reactor felt a little bit more... Uh, obviously lock on's a little different, but it's the same cost and similar concept as an, as a stalker. It kind of felt like the mech Marine. Um, I just personally think that the, the tech lab cyclone is a lot more nuanced and a lot more interesting. Uh, and we'll probably see battle mech even come back a little bit more with, with this. I mean, it's still played a little bit, but I think, I, I think I prefer the change a lot, uh, as a caster and a spectator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's an interesting one. Aside from uh, always wanting to give a little bit more utility to underused abilities, the idea of bringing back Mac the way it is in StarCraft One, or even some variation on it, has been that white whale that they've been chasing hmm. since Heart of the Swarm, I think. Well, yeah. let's move on to uh, the most OP race in the game, Zerg. Zerg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... so... We got an interest in one, yeah, this this patch, they've actually created two new abilities. One of them we already discussed was Energy Overcharge, but is the proposed Hydralisk Dash ability going to be worth the investment at all? Do you think you'll see it used? I think it's the big one. Well, let's start with you, Steadfast. <laughs> let's see what you think. <laughs> uh, I mean, in the games I've seen, it's, it definitely, it zooms. Uh, it, initially it was okay. super underwhelming when it was just 60% and like 0. 0.71 seconds. And my understanding was that initially it was actually two seconds, uh, before we even saw the light of day on the patch, but they were like, no, that's way too long. It's way too strong. 
But then this one was really underwhelming. So now they've tuned it back up to, well, tuned it up to 100%. Um, yeah, it's it's cool that the Hydralisk is going to now be potentially a unit that's more useful in the late game, like the ultra late game. Uh, it's a cool attempt. We'll see if it works out. I hope it does. Uh, things that have more utility and more impact and make the game more dynamic are generally a good thing. Uh, if it's too strong, then obviously they'll have to tune it down. If it's too weak, they'll have to tune it up. But yeah, I, I think it's a good move yeah. conceptually at the very least. Yeah, I know one of the longtime jokes has been, what is the Hydralisk useful for? Well, you can make lurkers out of them. <laughs> yeah. Cham or any of our other Zerg players, what do you think? Or do we have another Zerg player? Nope, just Cham. Okay, Cham. <laughs> How you like yeah. that Hydralisk? I like it a lot, a lot. I think it's okay. uh, it's one of the the most that I like because like in every race I can use it. For example, against Stan, I can just go a uh, hydrolink bane and I can use the dash for uh, to have a better concave to select manually yeah. the groups or just pick up something and then get out. <clears throat> and also, like in, against Zerg in late game, you can use dash to snipe a viper or or to snipe something. So it's definitely really good against Protoss. Um, I guess pretty much you know when uses uh bailing styles anymore. So they go like Roach Hida into Lurka and stuff. And against Protoss, there is a window of opportunity. Since the upgrade is like a hive tech um upgrade, right? So you have to macro it up first. And then once you have it, it's uh, kind of like uh, between mid game and late game. And that window of opportunity is is right before the Protoss gets like really strong and hydras become obsolete in the late game. You don't want hydras in the late game. So in that window, we're going to see probably a lot of action where you just attack multiple places. Night loses. You can just uh, pick up a high temper and then get out. The storm wouldn't do anything. I think in, in, <clears throat> like against Protoss, you would be definitely excited uh, to see the dash being applied by Cell or someone really good. What about in good. combination with Microbial Shroud? Do you think that instead of that being quite the Psystorm bullseye, this might allow them to just pop out, pop back in? Yeah, yeah, that definitely would be a, a good duo, yeah. But I'm excited. That's one of the yeah. most exciting ones that I want to play. Yeah, and that's good to hear. And Gerald, Max, Pax, and Spirit, do you guys have any thoughts on it? On the dash? Yes. Mm. I think it doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah, it, it, it seems a bit feel... uh, awkward when, when I play against it. I've I heard a lot of people to... say that, and... That's why I was so interested that uh, the Cham's a big fan of it. I'm looking forward to seeing him use that, actually. Sure. Yeah, it might get some use. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, the next one yeah. is, uh, is making the hatchery cheaper, but the queen more expensive a fair trade-off? Max Pax and Gerald, what do you guys think of that? Well, uh... Not a third that... player, but I think uh, <laughs> the spark crawler helps a lot against Oracle. So and the the Cirque doesn't need as many Oracles and uh, Queens now. I mean they just need a few for creeps with and inject. It's not like they're massing them to defend. So yeah. I'm not sure if it's a uh, they or not. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely harder to uh, harass with the Oracle, so they don't need as many Queens. And yeah, the spur crawler did get a buff. All right. Anyone else? I know that's been I know it's been one of the topics conversation. Yeah, I guess it will just uh, make certain players do all their openings like against Sand instead of making eight queens, they can just make four extra or three extra and do roach openings. And against Protoss uh, as well, you know, with the spur being strong as Max Play said. So yeah, probably just um, making us do other styles. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't like that. It's gonna promote roach play. It's uh, there's no interaction with it because for against links you can always push or fire them with the hellions or something. And against roach you only can like drop and to try to not engage. I think it does something kind of interesting to the game um, with, I mean, including the Spore Crawler change. 
so spores are obviously a lot easier to defend against oracles with in PvZ than in uh, sorry in ZvP than queens. Queens you have to have constant movement with the positioning. Like the oracles can kind of duck in from any angle, so you need to have overlords in position. Uh, we actually have probably the best player in the world on the call with us in the form of Max Packs at finding those openings. Um, but now it's going to be a lot simpler for Zergs to defend against Oracles, and it's going to be a lot more difficult to, uh, yeah, find an opening and and really, like, snowball the game from the early games. So I think it's going to actually make it a lot, relatively speaking, a lot easier for Zerg players to get into the mid-game, but it'll, it'll uh, in CVP, without, like, falling super far behind. But it's it's kind of just making it so that there's less to do to keep up with the Protoss, I think, uh, in the early game, which is kind of going to try and address an issue of like, okay, well, play like Serral, you know? Um, <laughs> which I think is a good thing because right now Zerg has been... Zerg has been nerfed pretty heavily for quite a few patches in a row uh, in order to try and keep Serral from winning. Uh, and it's... Uh, obviously, there's been lots of adjustments made across the game uh, but I think, I think something that's going to kind of make it a little bit easier for the players that aren't quite as good as Serral will, generally speaking, be a good thing for the race. But we'll we'll see. We'll see. All right. All right. So we're so, going to go into more broad questions now. Um, I'm gonna actually going to merge uh, a question mm -hmm. with another one because they're pretty similar. Sure. So I'm going to ask you guys: Are there any additional changes that you'd personally want to see added to the patch, and what changes might help limit? How often we say uh, see the same few players end up in the grand finals of tournaments? Hmm. Go back to a nine worker start. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was there ever a nine worker start? Nope. <laughs> okay, well you heard it here first. Yeah, and that's you that's why that stuff, it would Josh. be completely. It would be basically like they re released a new game. Um, I think that's pretty much the only way that you're going to see like a a reconstruction of the top of tournaments is to have the game basically get reset completely from scratch. All right. Yeah, I think that's does that, true. Does anyone else have their big unique take on the change that they need? You were, well, you were saying I don't have any. <laughs> but I think if they provide some new play styles, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it it can change. Maybe the top terrans won't be that good at this. Maybe go the Age of Mythology route and add a new race. People have been asking for it since Brood War, yeah. <laughs> Let players veto uh, a unit from their opponent's race out of <laughs> out of three. Can't can't touch stuff like the Marine, the Zergling, whatever. But like, give them <laughs> give them an option of like uh, one of three units, and then both players do it blindly, and then you go into the map, you know what it is. But then you play the game based on that. I had this idea a couple weeks ago, and I actually think it's a banging idea. I think I think that ties in a lot to the Battle Aces game that's gone back into beta. Like, you know, what if you had to choose which units even were in the game at the beginning? Yeah. All right. Yeah, could you imagine, uh, though, just veto, uh, vetoing uh, a unit and everyone's just trying to veto the workers the whole time? <laughs> Yeah, that's why you have to make yeah. it uh, three <laughs> it, three it's... specific units. So like like the banshee, like the I, I don't know. You'd you'd come up with three like middle of the road units. Yeah. How many well, people when... here have played a lot of mono battles? You know how that goes. They just kind of limit some of the stuff. All right. So I'm gonna combine two other questions into you know at the beginning of the patch notes at the first time they said that there were two of the big goals actually let's go let's go to three of the big goals one of them was trying to even things out at multiple levels of skill one of them was to give protoss more options against terran and one of them was to reduce uh how successful like tech like turtling and camping playstyles could be I know that last one especially got a lot of mockery because one of the big things they did 
and have since kind of retracted quite a bit was new abilities and buffs for a bunch of the uh, stationary defenses. So all around, and I'd like to hear from each person if possible on this one, do you think either the first time or after these additional changes, do you think they've uh, they've covered the goals that they set? Max Packs. I want to hear from Max Packs. <laughs> well, I I honestly think uh, well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think uh, PVT is a bit worse now than it was before. Because I think the early game is a bit harder. And uh, I I don't think it, there's so much to use the energy overcharge for in PVT, as you're not opening oracles. And if you open Sentry, it disrupts the build so a lot. Like you're gonna have a, if you're gonna make it early, it's gonna delay the blink. And if you're gonna make it after blink, it's gonna delay the robo robotics facility. And if you do it after robotics facility, it's gonna delay, like, even if, you, if you're going into robotics, Bay, it's gonna delay the Colossus mm -hmm. or Storm or whatever you're going to do. It, it just doesn't feel as smooth and a good to open Sentry in a PvT. And you can only make a one Sentry. You're only gonna make one Sentry for the push seven minute mark, which is gonna help a bit. But uh, it's not as impactful as the battery overcharge. And in late game, I think the Disruptor nerf is kind of huge. Because I don't think uh, disruptors are as good now, and uh, I don't really feel like there's any replacement for disruptor. Like you can't do storm, but it just feels weaker and uh, a bit fragile if you do it. Like it's very hard to be aggressive with a storm. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it just feels fragile. Yeah, we get what you. We get it. Yeah. Yeah. So less options against Tyrion, basically, in the end. So, Gerald, yeah, do you it, have anything to add to that? Oh, Max Pax, you too. Yeah, I would like to hear Gerald's opinion. Yeah, I agree overall. I think the problem is when you have army in back of two and you just going to attack your opponent, this army is going to just it's going to be one big ball yeah so all these high templars in one place and you need to split them every time so it's really hard to be aggressive with them because they are always <laughs> going to be one big ball which is pretty easy to emp and when you are uh, going to defense with high templars it's easy because you just split them before yeah you have always some these uh, high templars here and here so it's hard to tell, for, it's hard for Terran to EMP them easy. This is why, in my opinion, uh, High Templars are harder to use uh, in aggressive playstyle against Terran. Also, they are quite slow. It's another thing. Um, I think that there is less options, and also uh, like um, I think that, that you know. That there's no changes with planetary or sensor tower or turrets for uh, I mean turrets and sensor towers are not that big and you can just sell them but I, uh, I feel like this change with planetary is not that big when you are attacking it because anyway it's uh, it's not about I mean if Terran is going to repair it it's still pretty tanky yes so mm -hmm. you, you can't really attack it yeah? when he has army near to it so yeah and spirit I, I was curious of your opinion on that as well mm, i think i explained it before it's nothing gonna change for me it will be okay. just weaker because there's like no alternative play style also if you nerf if you nerf it like this even the offensive place like gonna be worse because when i remember i was playing very aggressive always is the issue that Whenever I move out, I'm getting punished, but like, I don't know, bailing run by, 
or just be grand by or I'm just getting gonna lose on creep or lose to fungal or just concave because if you see slowly the zerg base then he has very good angle to to beat your army so you always trade worse than if you sit behind planetary fortress hmm. okay so Considering the lack of time now, I'm going to ask the last and final question, if that's okay with you, Steadfast and Hyper Turtle. Sure. Uh, yeah, you... I, like, I like the last one. Uh, well, I'm going to ask question number 10, just to uh, end it on that one. Oh, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you believe the community reaction to the initial patch notes was justified? And how well... Uh, or, yeah, how well did the updated notes address the concern that were brought forward? <laughs> they lost their minds. It was insane. <laughs> I've never seen such a united, idiotic response to a genuine attempt to make the game better. I was <laughs> so unbelievably disappointed with the witch hunting and the shitty behavior that came through <laughs> from the community. People being like, wow, we're never going to see, bro. Like, what a joke this is. Guys, no, these are, like, sure, there was definitely some mistakes made, for sure. But, like, the overreaction was legitimately insane. <laughs> if, someone, if someone in your life behaved that way, when you were like, hey, I got a new haircut, they, like... <laughs> they like run into the middle of the street like into a highway in traffic like that was the level of response that we got there yeah, yeah no uh... it's, it, and also this was after months and months of when will they finally do some changes mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah well like I... there was actual witch hunches to find out who was on this council and try and figure out and everyone's like oh it was Cyril and Clem and all that and they're like oh damn with those guys and then everybody just wanted to post anything about it. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta say, I laughed at some of the memes, but uh, some of it ended up. I mean, how many, how many jokes can you tell about? Uh, okay, they said they were trying to limit camping, and then they increased the defensive structure abilities. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I, I get the point. Yeah, yeah. Once again, like there for sure, there was. There, it's good that that people spoke up but like some of the responses were just so nuts like they were just so crazy ex who you know shows up at your house with no no clothes on and just absolutely screams into uh, the void I, yeah and the reason i wanted to ask this as the last question is because this whole discussion wasn't a crap on any of the mm -hmm any of the changes or anything. We just want to ask what players' opinions were, and even from a caster's perspective, from Steadfast, mm. right? So, like, uh, I'm just curious, like, uh, Cham, Gerald, and Spirit, did you guys ever get any messages about that? Like, or, like, any criticisms or any questions from it? From no. the latest PTR patch? Um, Nothing? I mean, so... Because I'm Protoss player, people didn't blame me for the changes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, um, they they asked me a lot actually. Mm -hmm. Like they were asking me on Discord or I was on Epic Clan um, earlier this. Mm -hmm. I think this month or maybe I think this month or maybe October. But I was like few weeks ago on. Ep yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. So uh, I was there. A lot of people uh, were asking me questions about the patch and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I can say I uh, people were asking. Yeah, but they didn't blame me. So. Yeah. Well, Where I... were you when the patch notes dropped? Well, I want to also clarify with Max Max as well because, like, I know he doesn't use Twitter or anything like that. But did you ever get any messages about this uh, PTR update or questions if anybody's on the council, or if you are, or if any of them, if you know any of them? Like, have people well, messaged there are some you about people that messaged me, but it was mostly mostly in game and uh, something about that uh, the balance council hates purpose. <laughs> yeah. 
But um, and no, I don't really get any messages except like two. It's it's not a new thing either. I mean, the I remember several rants about Protoss uh, being nerfed after doing badly in tournaments back when Blizzard was still handling everything. It's uh, there's there's something there. I don't know what draws people to it, but it's not just this group of uh, volunteer players who are throwing their two cents in. And steadfast, do you get any messages about it or like questions in your stream? No, I'm just always like very outspoken and passionate about stuff, so people are scared to, you know. Hey, no, nice. um, no, I, I never, I never got anything. Uh, I mean, people were curious, obviously, like who who was on the council, blah blah blah. Uh, but there was no like, hey, can we organize a witch hunt? Like, no one came into my chat and was like, I want to know the name and address. And a list of their fears, so that Maybe I can social like social security number. Yeah, exactly. Chase them down, chase them around. Um, no, we didn't have anyone like coming in like that. For sure, there was definitely a lot of feelings of like, mm -hmm. and I I shared a lot of them. You know, like of like this is a really bizarre change. I don't understand this. But there was never like that that level of crazy that we got on our StarCraft, which it was crazy. People were crazy. They went nuts. And as pros like uh, Cham, Gerald, Spirit, and Max Pax, do you guys think this is an all right patch, like compared to what we got right now? Mm, hard to say, because I I don't like it's uh, it kind of make Protoss worse in the early game when it shouldn't, and kind of make Protoss better later on when it shouldn't as well. I think. Like if you watch GSL and other big tournaments, they always lose to some tank pushes. So I don't get it. Why? Why make it harder? And we never really see late games. So that's one reason number one I don't like overall changes. And in TVC, as I say, it's gonna be more roach oriented. So it's also less interesting. Fair enough. I don't know if the patch is fair, but I don't like it. What do you think, Gerald? Uh, I don't like it either. I mean, it's easier to die. Uh, like, usually, you know, I don't know, even yesterday, I think I was watching <laughs> Clem versus Gumiho, and Clem was playing Protoss, and he died in six minutes. To tank push, which was, which was super fun, actually, in worthy tournament. And on on new patch, of course, yes. Mm. And it was like, I don't know, it was like, it was just stupid at some point, like, because before, maybe, I mean, I think he would lose anyway, but, but it would be closer. And now I feel like it's going to be like super short game sometimes. And if Proto survive, it's going to be some. It's going to be hard for Terran, Maybe I'm not sure about that yet. Also, a, this patch. I mean, it doesn't change way we are playing, like compositions or build orders. Yeah, it's even block some build orders. Like I feel like in PVC, you need to play Oracle even more than before, because it's going to be even better, and there is no super battle. So I, I don't like this patch, even if in balance, it, it would be good. Yeah. Max Pax, what do you think? Good patch? Bad patch? Indifferent? No, no. Uh, I don't really like the patch too much. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I think uh, like some of the changes, they, they just changed it because uh, it feels frustrating to play against like the Disruptor. Like I understand why it can be frustrating to play against, and uh, it's not a very fun unit. But if they're gonna nerf it, I think they should do come with a replacement. And uh, I don't really think they did come with a replacement for a unit. And uh, I think that was uh, oh. I think uh, that was something they brought up last patch too. I mean, before this, where they said they wanted 
Protoss less dependent on the Disruptor, but then they didn't really give them an alternative. But yeah, go ahead, I interrupted you. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And um, I don't really understand the Immortal Chains either. Mm-hmm. Like, I would rather have to keep it as a 275 minerals and uh, the attack speed. I, I actually think it was even weak before against Zerg, because once the Zerg got a, a lot of Lurkers out, Immortals didn't trade well. If you they had like 20 Lurkers, you, you couldn't engage with 10 Immortals. Well, that's at least my opinion. And I think the nerf is a bit uh, unjustified. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we all agree that there should be a patch that makes Cham lose every game he plays. But Cham, what do you think about this patch? <laughs> well, at least in TVC, I <clears throat> kind of like it, you know, to uh, test the changes. There will be more Roach openings for sure, but you can still go Lean Bane, Roach, or yeah. do some Mass Roach to um, deceive them. I don't know. I think it's we're really excited to, to play that match. But against Protoss, we definitely need to keep an eye on that. Uh, to maybe make uh, a third uh, yeah. edition of the patch or something, because yeah, we, they gave us a lot of uh, opportunities to attack the Protoss, so it will pretty much force them to play certain styles or stop playing certain styles. I don't know. We will need to keep an eye on that matchup for sure. And also one more thing, uh, chat actually asked two questions, and I think both were directed towards Max Packs. Um, one of them is by this random guy named KJ. Um, did you get any grief about this PTR patch? Any vitriol, any hate? Yeah, I did get frustrated in the beginning, <laughs> but uh, after I played it, it uh, it didn't feel like it changed too much again. Like, there's, you can still have opportunities, and uh, it doesn't really change too much. I, I st- I still think it's going to be the same, pretty much. It's going to change a bit in PvP, but pretty much the same. Okay, and also someone else asked this one, uh, and I'll direct it towards you as well, Gerald. Uh, so, is the con- uh, conscience from the pros is Protoss will still die to early mid-game pushes without shield battery overcharge? I mean... In... I mean... I, f- I feel like in PvP, it's going to be really popular to just all in in mid game and push and stuff like that. And uh, in other matchups, also it's, I mean, it's going with bad early game, I feel like it's, it's going to be like super, super easy to die to first big push or to uh, like and to all in uh, for sure, like right now. When you have some big push or all in, it's sometimes super close. Yeah, and this even with the super shield battle. And after patch, I feel like it's sometimes it's going to be just instant lose. We didn't see that many games yet, and also map, maps maps are helping against that because they are big. Yeah, but I feel like yeah, I feel like it's. It's going to be just easy to die, and, but more in the early game, yeah. Because, for example, when you have already storm, and you can use this new skill on on High Templar in PBT or PBC, you have you know one extra storm at least, maybe two, depends on battery, on uh, High Templar energy. Yeah, so it helps in some scenarios. And Max yeah. Pax, what do you think? About, uh, what exactly? Uh, sorry. Uh, is the consensus uh, from the pros is that Protoss will die to early to mid game pushes without shield battery overcharge? Well, I don't know yet. I, I don't think. Um, I think you have to play a little bit extra safe. But uh, if you actually just play free gate. Blink or something, you should always be safe. And I don't think you can play two gate, blink into three nexus. It feels a bit risky. Okay. Well, with that, I guess we're done with the questions. Steadfast, do you have anything you want to add? Um, I mean, if, if, hmm, 
if there's a an opportunity for just a very quick like what is everyone's favorite change from the pros that yep. was that was my only like potential addendum question of course wait from the patch yeah what's your favorite change out of all of it which nerf i don't know yeah <laughs> nerf buff <laughs> any, any change <laughs> I don't yeah. really see Tyrone changes. <laughs> That's not a nerf, but um, maybe the disruptor change is your favorite. I was gonna say I think that's an easy one for Taryn. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I like the unit, so I don't like it if it's bad. Mm. Mm. I don't know the depot probably. <laughs> <laughs> the, definitely not the mothership. We lose the meme. So well, mm. I know Gerald's favorite change is the mothership. He he's excited to try it. I think, yeah, I think my favorite one is Mothership. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't see any <laughs> other one. You know, yeah, because you know, we live. Like, I think every pro is going to like the changes that benefits you, right? Like, I I really like the ghost change. I think we, mm -hmm. that extra supply is going to change a little bit. I like the Mothership change for them. I mean, not for me, because it's going to be harder, obviously. So. And there's uh, a lot of good changes that I like. <clears throat> and I'm guessing Max Pack's favorite change is the Cyclone change. Yeah, that's a good change, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I am definitely not a pro, so I'm just delighted that it won't be telling me that the workers stacked up outside an incomplete uh, Vespin geyser building won't alert me as being idle. No, I've been well, waiting for that. Well, my favorite change is because I love cheesing a Zerg. It's going to be that shield battery to energy overcharge. <laughs> hmm. Wait till you run into that force field and then another and another. <laughs> uh oh. Well. All right. With that being said, I guess Hyper Turtle and I will close it off. Uh, just letting the pros know, happy birthday, Steadfast. Thank oh, you. Wow. Happy yeah. birthday. Should we sing happy or birthday. should we spare them? We should have Max Pack sing happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's a rap. I want to hear a yeah. rap from Max Pack yeah. with happy birthday. <laughs> well, it's common knowledge that he sounds like Suzanne Boyle whenever he sings. So. Oh, wow. I, I think I read that on Reddit, actually. Yeah. And you can believe was... everything you read there. <laughs> I, I, only, I actually I only believe the stuff I post. Ah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, happy birthday, Steadfast, and uh, hopefully you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thank having you. me on and, and doing the thing. And th well, thank you and for then, hosting. Yeah. And we've got two other things. One is that... Uh, uh, I've got to check my calendar here, but Saturday, Saturday the 16th, we're going to be doing some pros versus Joe's games featuring some of the people featured here, as well as Namshire, who wasn't able to attend tonight. So we're going to be featuring some matches where some of the people from FSL, some of the real newbies, are going to be under the wings of these expert players in 2v2 matches. And let me catch myself there, because you heard me mention FSL, and I wanted to tell you what that is. That is the Fun Star League. That is a casual StarCraft league with, uh, with kind of low, middle, vaguely high players, not uh, kind of high diamond stuff, as well as some 2v2. And as soon as this wraps up, then over on KJ Freedom's channel, you get to see them at play. And that includes, uh, it's going to be, a, it's a team league this time around. And my team is going to be featured. And I indeed will be in the mid-level matches. I'm kind of high platinum these days. So check out KJ Freedom's channel. Check out what we're all about. And if you are someone who'd like to compete in a league, where you don't have to be one of the top players in the entire world, and in fact might be just the opposite, we are still recruiting. FSL people. All right, is there anything anyone else wants to add before we shift to that? 
what race do you play? What race? Oh, I'm uh, I'm usually random. I am an achievement nut. So I uh, tonight definitely I'm just playing random. I am getting closer and closer to the Predator and the Dark Voice portraits. Um, and yeah, it's been a while. Last time, last time I actually ran into Cham was a three v three game where he was off racing with a bunch of his friends and he was playing Protoss and basically, you know, we recognized him. We asked who he was. He's like, are you actually Cham? And he's like, okay. And he uh, killed all three of us with adapts uh, by himself with his friends standing back. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard it here and, fo uh, first, folks. He plays everything and is good at nothing. That's exactly it. I believe the old uh, the old phrase is, I fear not the man who knows a hundred different kinds of strikes, but the man who has practiced one strike a thousand times. I'm the former. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been fun. Thank you guys very much for uh, participating. Cham, Gerald, Spirit, and Max Pax. Really do appreciate you guys for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here. That's your insights have been yeah, very thanks. valuable. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I All guess right. we'll pass it off to Steadfast. Yep. Yeah. Have to do this again sometime. In the meantime, looking forward to seeing a few of you at the Pros versus Joes in a little over a week. And again, happy birthday, Steadfast. Thank you, thank you. Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday. Thank nah, you. thanks. <laughs>